Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. If you've been following along with my tutorial series, you may recognize the Bluer space plane and the Dalsinea carrier plane. In the tutorial series, we didn't quite get to orbit with this, but I decided that we should move on to more things that I could talk about in a tutorial fashion. But I definitely don't want to leave this be without actually getting it to do what it was supposed to do. So I'll just make this a separate sandbox episode where we uh, try and fix it. And I've made some modifications, of course. Uh, the first is we had too much kerosene fuel. And so I've reduced the size of these tanks and also reduced the amount of kerosene in this tank. So lightening the carrier plane up a bit. And we compensate for that by adding more fuel to the space plane. And we have changed the engines because previously a major problem was that the uh, it didn't have enough thrust to weight ratio and we were pitching up quite a lot in order to try to get to orbit. So we lost a lot of delta V like that. So instead of having two RD58 engines, I've replaced them with the NK9. Now we could try the NK9V, but then we're gonna, it's a much bigger vacuum nozzle. It's a little bit heavier and we'll have to change the vertical stabilizer. So we'll think about that, but uh, for now it's the NK9 and it's just the regular configuration, not these other ones. I don't know this hypo the speculative upgrades I don't know about. I don't trust speculative upgrades. So um, this is just a regular one. And uh, we of course have changed this back to kerosene and liquid oxygen. We are now at full utilization of that tank, which improves the sort of dry mass ratio a little bit. And we also had to change the wing form uh, to pull the center of lift forward because uh, we found that it was a little bit too nose heavy during the re-entry test. So that will help a little bit. Uh, we also reduced a little, oh, no, I think we still have about the same amount of MH and NTO in those tanks, so that is okay. All right, so with this, let's see how far off we are. I haven't changed the tanks. I had talked about maybe putting in a lighter weight tank in the middle where it won't be vulnerable on both the carrier plane and the space plane, but um, I have not done that yet. Of course, we took off the side pods on the same uh, on the space plane where the RD58s were since we don't need those. This engine provides the 400 kilonewtons that we've got. And the RD58s were only providing about 160, 170 ish. So that's a big difference here. So let's see if it works out. Okay. As usual, it wants to go on its hind legs, but we can use the body flap to knock that down. And brakes on. Now, of course, to be a really useful uh, space plane, this whole thing would need to be sized up by quite a lot but the carrier plane is useful on all on its own because you could put some other payload on top of it and it'll work out in fact uh, the nk9 or 9v would be a good booster engine for that payload regardless of what the payload is and uh, though we could use something else anyway sas on well actually uh atmospheric autopilot and a little bit of flaps okay ignition so for those who didn't watch the tutorial series, we've got um, eight of the F-15 engines. Really, I need to move them further back, but we'll have to sort of shift weights around a little bit. We have to find some way of compensating for the fact that they are being moved back by putting something else up front, which I haven't quite figured out yet, or we could just sweep the wings a little bit more in a delta fashion. I think that's probably what's going to happen. I don't even know if it's a good idea to have these as flaps when they're almost elevons now. As usual, we will try to rotate a bit, but we're relying somewhat on the end of the runway here for actually being able to... I could make the landing gear longer, and that would help, because all we need to do is make sure we pitch up by 15 degrees and it'll have lift and go up. 
but uh, right now we don't have 15 degree degrees worth of clearance without potentially hitting the body flap. These are RS-25s, the Space Shuttle main engines. We are taking off from Brownsville. So this was Brownsville and we're, take, uh, we're going to be landing at Cape Canaveral with the carrier plane, but I'm not going to fall through with that. We're going to assume that it works because we tested that out in the tutorial series, so you can watch that. We've kept the mass of the carrier plane uh, lighter than it was during the tutorial series, so it should still work out just fine. We've just been dumping kerosene out of it. Oh, I forgot to take the flaps up. And we do need to turn to the heading for Cape Canaveral. Well, one other thing I have to consider is that um, I gotta subtract this kerosene out from what we have there in estimating when to quit with the jet engines. So we're looking at stopping at about 15,000 kerosene there. 14, 15 will be fine. Okay, we're at 12 kilometers and we have to get ready to fire up the rocket engines. We'll like climb a little bit further. Last time it was 13 kilometers. But I think we'll go now. Just pull up smoothly. And... Up to 45 degrees. That'll do. Okay, shutting off the jet engines. Just the RS-25s now. Much quieter this way. We don't need as much time to apoapsis as I was expecting to last time, and I didn't expect enough, actually. We needed more, as it turned out, but this time it's a much shorter stage with the space plane. The space plane occupants will be experiencing like nearly 5 G's at the end of it though but that's the price we pay the NK9 doesn't throttle down now one drawback of the NK9 compared to the RD58 is it only has one ignition so we're going to have to deorbit just with our RCS and I don't know if we have enough RCS fuel we'll find out So, if possible, we'd like an engine in this form factor that has more than one ignition. And that probably ends up being like a Merlin. I think a Merlin would fit. It'd have a lot more th uh, thrust-weight ratio, but it also throttles, so... Okay, let's get the RCS ready, have that hold steady, and separate. Oh, whoa, 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 uh, I'm sorry, got a pilot off. Okay, just, um, um, it's a lot of rolling. Oop. Stop rolling. Okay, well, hmm. Pitch, let's say 20, uh, let's say 80 on the heading. And let's go roll zero eventually, hopefully. So the stage time on this now is 2 minutes and 40 seconds left, about 3 minutes altogether, and we've got a thrust weight ratio much better than 1. So good times. Nope, we don't want that time to have lapses going up. That would not be necessary. Okay, well, we are in space. 
we can see Florida and since we basically continued on the heading that we were on with the carrier plane we can see the carrier plane was aimed at Cape Canaveral properly with Tampa Bay up to the right there so all good okay here come the high G's And shut down. 256 by 142. Really tight. Really tight. Not a whole lot of margin here. 32 meters per second there. And now we have to get back down using RCS. Well, first thing, um, let's... Well, we should probably come back on one orbit. We've got a fair amount of electric charge draw. Let me see how long that lasts for. That's 25 hours, just enough for us to make a day of it. So we could try and last a day, but I think we'll just come back down on the next orbit. Whatever. Okay, and we are deorbiting. It's possible we could have gotten into a full orbit, in other words, a circular orbit and then deorbited. I think we have enough RCS for that. Right now we're mainly using these back ports here. I real uh, these forward ones really don't need to do this part. It's awkward. They're torching half the body. I think a periapsis of fifty-five-ish might be good. I'm not sure though. It's tough to say. I don't know if we improved the balance enough or whether it's going to be off balance and what kind of gliding we'll be doing. I do want to try to get back to Cape Canaveral though. We'll see. Now we've got the remnants of the decoupler there. That's a bit sad. Okay, we have encountered the atmosphere. So right now, if you take a look at our path, we're just north of Cape Canaveral, really. We could still make it. You can see how far north we are compared to uh, Brownsville there. So that has progressed. I wonder if I could like go to KSC Switcher. Well, now that we're in the atmosphere, I can't. But possibly if we were in orbit, I could have gone to the tracking station and used KSC switcher to change where the KSC was and then try to land at Cape Canaveral. That would have been better. Right now we won't have a runway there. Okay, we're at uh, 100 kilometers. You can sort of see the RCS buffing. This is why I want to take it out of physical time warp at 100 kilometers because otherwise the RCS will probably go a little bit more than I wanted to. So we have to be patient. We're still not uh, at the west coast yet. Our periapsis is there and going down quickly. We'll probably get some lift at some point. You can see the vertical speed trending towards zero. So, But we're holding this 40 degree pitch. And we may not be able to continue holding this 40 degree pitch indefinitely. We'll see. Okay, yeah, it's sort of maxing out that pitch nearly. I'm gonna... Well, first things first, let's make sure that all that fuel is gone. I did fuel prioritization so that the tail tank would be the last drain. Alright, we'll um, reduce the pitch that we hold. Oh no, not the engine again. Come on. I tried to tuck it in. It's protected and everything. Is it because the the tank is conveying heat? Got some heat penetration. Hmm. Maybe we need some buffer between the tank and the engine. That's highly irregular. Oh well, hopefully it'll hold out. Well, we are getting lift and that'll help us to hang out here for a little bit while we burn off some of the speed. And maybe that'll help keep the engine cool. 
The longer we drift up here though, the more we're gonna end up using the RCS and, you know, we will eventually run out of that. So at some point we need to get to lower altitudes to use the control surfaces instead. Okay, well interestingly we didn't get as much lift as I expected. That's okay, we're over Mexico right now. Okay, getting a little bit more lift here, but is it gonna be enough? And we're a little bit further south than I was hoping for in terms of being over land. Mm, I probably shouldn't try to have any cross range for now. <laughs> that might be overly optimistic. Oh, we've reached the limit of our RCS. Alright, fine, fine. We're slow enough that it's not going to be a problem. So just just south of Louisiana, but we're sort of running out of terrain here. <laughs> um, let's see, which way is... that's the rate, way I'd want to roll. I don't think it's going to have that much of an effect, but we might as well try. Well, well, okay, no, that's the communication line. But our flight path, path uh, is not bad. Let's try zeroing out the roll. Maybe we can get to Florida after all. I don't know. That last bit of lift. Might have done well enough for that. We'll see. And But we're running out of the RCS, all right. Okay, let me just turn off the RCS and see how it does. Oh, not bad. The control surfaces are sort of holding the pitch. It's waggling though, of course. Once you take it off of the RCS, it likes to waggle. I'll let it be. It's like a happy puppy. All right, well, there's Florida. Uh, now we have to sort of make sure we actually slow down before we uh, go right past, huh? Done a pretty good job here. Unfortunately, again, no runway there. So a little bit anticlimactic, but there's Tampa Bay. No, I don't really want to start going up. Maybe we can brave going down instead. Let's take the plunge. It's a little bit high to be doing this, though. Yeah, we're going a bit fast. I think I actually want to roll the other way. It's actually unexpectedly good at rolling. I'm still using Smart ASS because I'm too concerned that if I try and control it manually, I might rip off the aerodynamic control surfaces. So, yeah. Uh, but I think it's time. So, atmospheric autopilot. Oh, 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 oh. Wait. Disabled, enabled. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Be careful. Oh, it's doing things that I don't want it to do. Ah, uh, oh, oh, this might have been a bad decision. You can see the G forces. Um, okay, I, I want it back on smart. Okay, that's bad too. All right, forget it, forget it, forget it. Oh, God. This has gone all bad. I shouldn't have taken it off of Smart ESS in the first place. Uh, I'm not going to try and control it, otherwise I'm afraid things will rip apart. Okay. We were close. <laughs> we were close to Cape Canaveral. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. Well, we got to orbit, but we seem to have done some other bad business here. That I did not expect. 
They might actually survive this at these speeds, I'm not sure. Oh. 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 Flashy lights bad. Okay, what if we retract the landing gear? Okay, things have gone strange. I wonder what happens if you EVA Jeb right now. Oh, Jeb sank. Jeb sank. Oh no, he, he's... Yeah, he's sinking. That's not good. Um, deploy shoot? I guess that doesn't work. Um, he can't float to the surface? Come on, he should be able to swim to the surface. Alright, well this has been a disaster. Well, some success, but we need to do some fixing clearly. So, with this I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Oh, he's going up again now. Did he bounce off of the bottom of the sea? I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, well, hold on a sec. Uh, no. He stopped at negative 46 meters. I don't know. I don't know what's happened. Yep, no idea. Oh, he doesn't look happy though. Hold on. Oh, he can still move though. Um, wait, what? I saw a climb. Climb? Oh, he's climbing on something. What have we discovered? <laughs> oh, it's going up slowly. I don't know what he's climbing on. Oh, surface of the water there. And... After a great deal of climbing on water, apparently, that's all I can figure out, uh, Jeb has made it to the surface. Uh, oh, please don't sink again. Can he swim? I don't know, he doesn't seem to be getting anywhere. It's so strange, there's still climb. Okay, fine, keep climbing. Jeb can walk on water. Well, I don't know for sure though. It's a little bit awkward right now. Anyway, okay, so thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.